How's it going, everybody? Brett Schottkavis here with Palm University, and I wanted to talk to you tonight about investing with a purpose, how to start your own assisted living mansion. So I want to talk to you about what an assisted living mansion is. I want to talk to you about how much money we make and how we're able to do something that invests into our community that helps the people that are around us. And we're not just here to make money, but we are here to make money with a purpose. And that purpose is helping the people that are in our community, in our neighbors, in our neighborhoods, and the seniors that are around us. So um, this is something that I am super passionate about. I love the opportunity here. I love the niche with the assisted living mansion. So I want to break down what that is, show you how you can do it, and kind of just show you what the difference between what we do in assisted living mansion and some of the other assisted living options that are out there. So an assisted living mansion, um, it has been able to change my life in several different ways. And I'm going to kind of share my story, share um, how and what this has done for me. So with an assisted living mansion, me, my partners, we are able to make consistently forty to sixty thousand dollars net each month. That's from one assisted living mansion. So you can see our assisted living mansions down here, um, forty to sixty consistently each month. That is way, 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 way more than any other deal that I've done. Right? I've I've been in real estate. I've done uh, flips. I've done multifamily. Um, to have that consistent income like that has been a game changer for me and for my family, for my partners. Um, I kind of was able to get out of the ups and downs, the highs and lows of the real estate game and get into this niche, which has been really consistent for me. So I'm going to break down more about it, why I got into it, and um, some of the, um, I guess, challenges or some of the hurdles that I was considering before I jumped into this. And uh, I'm assuming if you're in this spot, if if you are considering open assisted living or assisted living mansion, that you're having these same thoughts, that you're having these same like, should I do this? Is it worth it? What are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, I've been in that same spot. I, I was there a few years ago and um, I've been through the journey and I want to share from our from my perspective, you know, what it's like, what has been great about it, what's been challenging about it and how has it affected us? So I believe this is the best way to get to financial freedom. I think that um, my goal in life is, is to have financial freedom, to be my own boss, but not just that, right? It's not just about money, right? I've, I've had other businesses where I've made great money, but I didn't feel fulfilled in that. I didn't feel like I was living on my purpose or my calling, which simply put is just to help the people around me. So I was actively looking. I was looking for some type of deal, some type of business in real estate that I could do that would benefit those around me. I actually started a sober living house years ago, um, but that was just not for me. And uh, that was along my journey as I was trying to figure out how do I serve my community? How do I help the people in my neighborhoods and in my city? So um, that was part of what I was searching for. And then it came across assisted living and kind of develop this niche of the assisted living mansion. So I'm super passionate about it because it has changed my financial uh, outlook, but it has also done it in a way where I feel great about myself. I love going into the assisted living. I love being able to, to hang out there and hang out with the grandmas and play bingo and just shoot shoot the bowl with the ladies and, and uh, the grandpas and just have a good time and know that what I'm investing in is making a difference and that one day at the end of my life, when I'm accountable for what I did here on this earth, I can say, hey, my investments, my time, my energy, my wealth was built by helping people. So I love it. I want to share more of my story and, and teach you about this niche and this opportunity and um, kind of show you some of the pros and cons about it. So here's my team. Here's me, Brett Schottkavis, uh, Laura Schottkavis there in the middle, and Shannon Conway uh, all of my business partners at uh, Platinum Resort Assisted Living in Georgetown and with Palm University. So here's us, a quick little version of us. Um, so my background is in real estate. I love real estate. I love building things. Um, I love investing and I love money in, in a way that I think it's it's a fun game to play. Um, so I'm a real estate investor and I'm also an entrepreneur and a speaker and coach. Um, my beautiful wife here in the middle, Laura Schottkavis, she is a real estate investor as well. 
She's an amazing interior designer. Uh, and then marketing and networking is her niche. It is her, her, her unique ability. She is amazing at that. She's a rock star. And then uh, I met Shannon Conway a few years back. We partnered together a few years ago. But before we even met each other, she had, was in corporate um, big box, right? In the assisted living corporate world for 20 plus years. She was a memory care director at one of the big facilities when we met her. She's a certified dementia practitioner. And this is really her calling her niche to be able to take care of seniors. It is with it is in her unique ability. She loves it. It is all she wants to do is just love on grandmas and grandpas. So we partnered up. Uh, I brought the real estate stuff. She brought the uh, assisted living knowledge and uh, we uh, created a dynamite team here. So as I'm going through this journey a few years ago, before I got into assisted living, um, I, I said, I, we're, I'm in real estate. And real estate, like like many businesses, right? You have the ups and the downs, the real highs and the real lows. And I wanted some consistency, but I also was looking for an opportunity where I could help people, where I could serve the people that are around me. And um, I was thinking about this, uh, like wh what are the biggest problems in our country, in my city, around me? What do I see, right? Because I, I see like different people who are successful in business. Right. And they they're successful because they found a big problem and they solved that problem. Right. They they were able to like even as somebody who invents something. Right. They see a problem. They create a, um, an invention that solves that problem. Right. And like the bigger the problem or the more widespread the problem, the bigger the opportunity, the bigger the reward. Right. So I'm thinking to myself, what is the problem that I see? What's a big problem like that just everywhere? And um and then it came to me like assisted living is a huge problem, right? It doesn't matter where, where we are in, in Texas or where uh, I used to be from in California. You could be anywhere in this country, probably anywhere in the world. I'm not sure about that part, but anywhere in this country, I do know for sure that assisted living is a problem, right? And what's the problem? Nobody wants to be there because they're, they're, they're terrible, to be honest, right? Like you look back at the Billy Madison movie, like, get me out of here. Right. Like everyone has a negative association with assisted living and it's for good reason. Right. We've spent uh, generations of generations of, of doing a bad job in this in this space. No one is doing um, at, at, on a widespread, you know, national level. No one is doing an amazing job just knocking out of the park with assisted living. Right. You see all the big brands that are around the country that have hundreds of, of these huge big boxes. Right. They're not crushing it. They're not known for their amazing care and you got to go to such and such assisted living because it has the best care right like no there's they're just known for bad care so anywhere you go this problem is here so that's why i want that's why i love this opportunity because in assisted living it doesn't matter if you're in a big city or if you're in a small town all right if you're in the suburbs or if you're in the country anywhere you go Assisted livings have the same problem. They have the same negative uh, connotation. Nobody wants to be there. They're known for bad care. They're known for big, smelly facilities, right? So if, as I'm thinking about through this whole thing, I'm thinking to myself, well, what if I found a, a solution, right? Like there's a huge problem here. I don't, I didn't have to be like knock it out of the park, but even what if, what if I was just able to do it like five times better, five steps better above everyone else, right? Like I know I could, right? I, I I don't know anything about assisted living. This is fast forward, rewinding a few years, right? But I'm a businessman and I love a great challenge. And, and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's a big problem. So there must be a big reward, right? Like I, and and we've seen that we have a huge waiting list, 62 people on our waiting list. And we've only been open for, for a few years, right? And it's because of what we do. We do it differently. And I'll explain what that niche is. But there is a huge opportunity for you to do this anywhere, now, compound that with we have the baby boomer generation, one of the biggest generations that are all um, hitting that senior age, right? They are all getting to a point where they're going to need extra care. They're going to need extra help. It's about 10,000 people every single day that turn 65, right? And on average of every, every person at the end of life, the average person needs about two years of care. Two years, that's a lot of care. So there is a massive, massive opportunity here. And um, Shannon, myself, and Laura spent spent a long, long time trying, just trying to figure out like, okay, how do we solve all the problems here 
to create something new, to create a new niche so that people can uh, love assisted living. So I'm not going to say we're perfect by any means, but we are way better than everything else that is around us. And uh, our market, our community um, supports us in that. And that's why we have a massive wait list. So let me talk about uh, this problem here. So the assisted living options, right? There's really two main options. And and the big box, that's been around for, you know, as long as we've had these before they were assisted livings, they were nursing homes or whatever they were called in the old days. But these big facilities, right? There's 60 beds, 100 beds, 200 beds. They have assisted living, independent living, memory care, big old buildings, right? And they're smelly and they, they're sterile looking and they either look like a hospital. Some of the nicer ones look, actually look like a hotel, but that's that's still not too much better. Um, they they have like a, they're always owned by big corporate, right? They have like this stuffy kind of corporate kind of vibe. They're, they're known for their bad care, right? Nobody wants to be in one of these. The, the mom has always said, Hey daughter, make sure promise me, you never put me in one of these big facilities, right? Nobody wants to be in these things, They have, but they do have some good things about them. So let's be fair here, right? Because they're big, they have a nurse that's on staff. They have an operations director, like someone who has a ton of experience to be able to run the show for them. They have private rooms, and usually a lot of times they're good-sized private rooms, and they have private bathrooms. Uh, they have a chef. The food's usually not very not very good, but nonetheless, like they have an actual professional cook that's taking care of that stuff, right? So there, there's negatives and there's positives to this big box facility. So, but people like, again, for, for many generations have hated this idea, this, this big box and as a result of that, the next option became a popularized, you know, 10, 20 years ago, right? And that's this smaller, this residential assisted living. Now, residential assisted livings, again, they have great things to them, but they have a handful of, of negatives to them also. So I have some pros and cons. So let's talk about this. If you're gonna, um, if you're looking for a smaller space, you don't want to be in the 100 bed facility, a residential assisted living is much smaller, right? They're commonly a six bed or an eight bed or a 10 bed assisted living. And it's usually an actual house. Like in this picture here, they, they take a house. You can see they converted the garage. They removed the garage door. They added a couple more bedrooms to that garage, right? So it, it's a house. And usually, you know, they, they don't have private rooms. They don't have private bathrooms. You, you know, you, you share rooms with people and it's usually mom and pop run, right? You're, you're the owner. They're there. They're there all the time. They're kind of trapped in their business. And they don't have the, the, the income to be able to provide all the services, all the amenities, right? You, you, when you compare apples to apples with the, the big facilities, right? They have the nurse and the professional director, and they have all the outside services. And you can get all the medical things, right? You have like a professional taking care of you if you develop dementia or when you have medication issues. And you usually you can't get all of those type of amenities in one of these small houses, so it's great in its fact that it's smaller, it's safer in a post-COVID world, but it's usually not as nice. You usually don't have your own room. You usually don't have your own bathroom. There's definitely not a chef or a salon. So why can't we solve this problem? Why can't we have both of these things? So that was kind of our journey. That was what we were looking for as we were trying to figure out how do I solve the problem of assisted living? So this is what we created. This is Platinum Resort. Um, we are licensed for 16. We're in Georgetown, Texas. And here's what our niche is, right? It's an assisted living mansion. Now, to me, that means two separate things. It means we have all the amenities of a big facility. So that means we have uh, a nurse that comes in. We have a professional director to be able to run the show. We offer memory care. We have all of our outside services, home health, hospice, PT, OT, podiatrist, um, everything that you can get at a big facility, we have it here. We have our own private chef. We have our own salon. We have private rooms. We have private bathrooms. Everybody has a nice big room, their own space. They're not sharing rooms and they have everything that you can get at a big facility, but it's not a facility, right? It doesn't look like a facility. You can see in the picture, it's this gorgeous, you know, uh, farmhousey modern looking home. And, uh, this building, it, um, it is. It's. It's. We call it a mansion, right? They're. They're huge. They're. They're 16 bedrooms, 17 bathrooms, and um, they're uniquely designed to be completely ADA to 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 be fully fire suppression and and everything else that you would need in a facility. But we designed it to not look like a facility. We designed it to actually look like a mansion. You don't have the parking lot in the front. You don't have that red curb. 
there's there's actually no big sign that says welcome to such and such assisted living it looks like a custom designed mansion so that's what our niche is if you have all the amenities of the big facility but you do it smaller right you do it where um where it's safer you do it where you have instead of one nurse that takes care of 100 people you have one nurse that takes care of 16 you have one chef that doesn't cook for 100 they now they cook for 16 so you get way better care because of, of, of the ratios of staffing, right? You have way less people. You have 16 or 18 or 14 people in an assisted living mansion. So with all that in mind, now what we can do is we can be able to be competitive with the big facilities, right? We can charge what the high-end big facilities are charging. Now, that's kind of the difference of our niche. Because we can offer all of these amenities, we can afford... The, the, the best of the best director, and we can have a higher bed rate. So let me break this down a little bit more. All right, so this is this is the niche here. We make forty to $60,000 net each month. Now, that's not income. That's net. That's takeaway. So, and what is awesome for me, um, coming from, from other businesses where my income goes up and down and up and down, and I never had that consistency, this type of business is super, super consistent. Um, so we've had in say the, the last year, we, we have 16 beds. We only had five or six, um, actually beds turnover, right? So the consistency is I don't have to make sales every single week, right? Like it, the, the checks are there. They're on auto pay. I'm getting the same income consistently over and over and over. So I'm going to talk to you about what the income looks like, but the consistency, consistency is fantastic. And that's why I love this model. That's why I think it is way better than some of the other real estate investments that I've done. So your registered your registered residents they're with you for years, right? We're not picking people who are, are, are on their deathbed. It's not a hospice house, right? Our people are there for for six months on the short end, sometimes you know three four years. So, um, I would say this: when when I was going through this, when I was in in your shoes and I was looking at should I open my own assisted living, um, I was skeptical of a few different things. So I'm going to break down some of these things that I was skeptical for and just kind of share like, here's here's the pros, here's the cons. And you can kind of decide for yourself, is this a good fit for you? So um, I was going through this a few years back and I was having someone teach me about it and they were talking about the different potential profit. And I didn't really believe them. I thought, I thought it was exaggerated. So I'm going to break down here, right? We say we make 40 to 60,000. I'm going to show you what it looks like. But I will say this right off the bat, that uh, a few years ago, I had a nine bed. And small assisted livings, they do not work. They do not work. I would not recommend them. I, I, that's why our niche here for an assisted living mansion, we're 14, 16, 18 beds. Um, and I'll show you how you can do that in any state. So um, residential assisted living, again, not for me. Um, you know, there are people out there that say you can make $10,000 a month, right? When you're full, but you could also lose money if you have two open beds, right? You don't have a ton of income and we'll show what that looks like. You have a couple open beds and now it's like, well, I went from 10 to zero or maybe negative two. Like, I don't want to be doing that. That's that's not a game I want to play. So let's talk about the most important number with assisted living. The most important number is the number of beds. The number of beds is the most important. So I would say this right off the bat, six, seven, eight beds for assisted living. I've been, I've been there. I've done it. Uh, I think you break even. Literally, I mean, you have months where you make, okay, you make 10 grand, great. But then things happen and life happens and business gets hard and stuff breaks. And you got, you know, you, you, a lot of times you break even, right? So for me, my assisted living mansion, like I said, we have a, at a director and we pay $100,000 base salary plus bonuses to our director, right? It's a huge salary, it, it, but I, I, I have the numbers to support that. So my break even number when we have, when we have our, our director plus our full staff, plus we have a chef is about nine beds. Okay, nine beds for me is our break even. So I have 16. Um, that just goes to show you, like when, when you're actually doing it right, you're not cutting corners on things, you're, you're being able to provide all of these amenities. You can't do it with six or eight beds. Literally, like based on my expenses, you'd be losing like 15, 20 grand. So my other thought here is when it comes back to number of beds, um, bigger is better. Not, not super big, not assisted living like the big facilities big, but it is the same amount of work. It's probably even less work to do an assisted living mansion than it is to do a smaller residential style, right? Let me say it again. Like it is literally easier. It is physically less work, less time 
to do 16 beds than it is eight, right? And that's because of the staffing, right? I can have two staff and a director and an assistant for having a 16 bed, which means I'm out of the equation, right? If I have an eight bed, I have one staff. And if I have two staffs, then I'm, I'm probably breaking even. So it is um, easier and um, it, it just saves you more time. You make more money if you are bigger. So that is the first point. The second point, the price per bed. Price per bed affects everything. Your expenses are usually about the same, whether you're charging 5,000 a bed or 7,000 a bed or 10,000 a bed. So let me show you what we do. Um, our average bed is between seven and $8,000 per month. And depending where you are in the country, some of you might say that's like, whoa, that's super low. And some of you might say, whoa, that's super high, right? Like it is relative to where you're at. But for us, um, we want to be charging what the nicest big boxes are charging. When you have a new construction facility that comes in and it's big and elaborate and beautiful, um, we want to charge what they're charging. So that, that's kind of our point. So for us here in Georgetown, Texas, it's about $8,000. That's what our market is, right? We're not a super, super high-end affluent area, but we're, we're above average. So $8,000, um, especially if you I can offer memory care services and, and uh, it's about, that's about what the big boxes are charging. So we talked about this, what our niche is, right? For the assisted living mansion. We have all the same amenities, right? So we have a nurse that's on call. On call. Yeah, we have the memory care. Um, we, we can bring in all the outside services. So that's home health, hospice, uh, uh, OT, PT, dentist, podiatrist. And if you haven't gone through Shannon's operation training, she can teach you how to bring in all these outside services because everything we just listed there, they're not on our payroll. We do not pay for them. The, these are all services that are either provided by the state or they are done by the, uh, the resident's insurance. So all of those things, right? Even the nurses and the doctors coming, they come every day, right? Um, all those outside services, they're not on my payroll. I, I don't have to cover them. I don't have insurance for them. They have their own, right? And it's covered by the resident's insurance. So what I do pay for, what is on my payroll is the chef. And then we have our own salon in the building and we have an outside service lady who comes in. She comes in once a week and does the ladies and the gentleman's hair. So if I can have all these amenities and we, we saw the picture of the building, um, you can go actually on our website on palm.university. You can take a virtual tour of what our assisted living mansion looks like and you can walk through. Um, but uh, so we can offer all the same amenities in a smaller, like 10,000 square foot mansion that's been custom designed for ADA, for care. And again, we have 16 residents. We run two staff around the clock, which means we have way better staffing ratios, care ratios. We can provide way better care. So here's what the income looks like, okay? Monthly income. So 16 residents, that's our model, times an average of 7,500 per bed. That's our monthly gross income. So 16 times 7,500, $120,000. So $120,000 comes in very, very consistently every month, right? Because we're not turning beds. Now, if you are residential in style or you're one of these small mom and pop owned um, assisted livings, usually you convert a house, you have shared rooms, you can't offer all the medical amenities that we just went through, right? You, you don't have the chef, you don't have the salon. So usually because of that, your bed rates are lower. Now, in addition to your bed rates lower, you have less bedrooms, right? You have less residents. So here's an example, eight residents at 5,000 per bed and you're at 40,000 income. So you went from eight residents to 16 residents. It didn't double in income, it tripled in income because we're able to charge more per month because of what our niche is. Right, that 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 high end luxury boutique mansion that offers all the care that the big boxes do. So, this is what the expenses look like. So, breakdown staffing. We spend about thirty eight thousand on average each month. So, again, that is a hundred grand on salary to our director. We pay staff. We are between sixteen and eighteen dollars an hour for our caregivers. Uh, two caregivers, twenty four hours a day, and then we have a chef at twenty bucks an hour, and um, that's full time. Operations, that's our food, that's our utilities, our insurance, um, PPE, all the miscellaneous stuff is about $16,000 a month. And then our building, that's our mortgage and our taxes, um, any other things that are in there is about $8,000 on a uh, $1.2 million building. So our total expenses, 62,000. That's, that's pretty close to average consistently uh, each month for what our expenses look like, right? We talked about how 
if you're smaller, right, you have an income of potentially 40,000. I mean, you look at what staffing looks like. That's, that's almost the whole thing. That's without food or utilities or insurance or anything else. So here's our monthly net profit. Um, this is really what I wanted to know a few years ago when, when I was going through this. Is this real? Can I make this money? This is what it looks like. So monthly income, we broke that down 120000 minus our monthly expenses of 62000 is $58,000 net per month. So that is what an assisted living mansion does. It is very consistent. That's why I think this is the best play as far as if you're looking for a, a, an investment or a business opportunity that makes amazing money, but is able to help people. So as I was going through this, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I didn't come from a lot of money or a lot of wealth or anything like that. So I was concerned, like, how do I do this, right? How do I, how do I get the money to do this, right? I'm, I'm interested. I like this idea. I like this concept. I see the opportunity and the potential here. I know all the baby boomers are coming, but I don't have the cash to be able to do this. So great news for me, right? I did not use any of my own money, right? Um, and it's not just me. Like I've taught other people how to do this without using their own money. So it's actually really, really easy to raise the money for these kind of deals because the bank, the, the local banks, they'll usually lend you the majority of the money, right? They're going to lend you like 80%, 75%, sometimes 90% of the whole deal. So now you, all you have to do is go raise 20 or 30% of the capital, just a small portion of the capital. So everyone can relate to this problem, right? And I think this is why it is so easy to, to raise money for this niche because everyone has a loved one that needs care, that has been in an assisted living, that has, they've seen firsthand like how gross, how smelly, how nasty it is. And they know eventually like they're gonna get there at some point in life. So it's real to everyone. Right. So people are, are aware that really the only options are a bad option and a worse option. And if you can come to them and say, hey, look, here's my plan. I'm going to do this assisted living mansion. And we offer all the amenities and care that a big facility, but in this gorgeous, like custom designed ADA mansion. And I have this big heart and I'm going to partner with this person who has this experience and loves on seniors. And we're just going to crush it. Right. Um, people potential investors, people, you know, friends of friends, they are excited. They're, they're ecstatic to be able to, to invest in something like this for two reasons. First, because it makes amazing money. There, there is a lot of money to be, to be able to divide up between partners, right? That the, the second reason is they feel great about doing this because you're helping people. You're legitimately like taking care of people and they may be a passive partner, but they feel like they're part of this, right? They are using their income, their IRA, their retirement money to invest into your business and you're helping people. They're a part of that and they, they get excited about this. So this is a super easy thing to raise money for. So this is the hot topic, right? The, the, the potential, this recession that's here or that's coming, whatever you want to say about it. Um, this is a recession proof niche. And let me break this down. Because where we are at in this, in this space, it is unavoidable. Everyone gets old. You can't just stop getting old, right? Like you can't just like hit the button and, and skip the last few years of life and check out. You get to the end of life and then you, you, can't, you can't do certain things. You physically can't take off your pants or, or get to the toilet or like get out of bed, right? So it never goes out of style. There is, um, we're in this space where we're not talking about like, you retire and you're driving around the golf course with like, you know, a golf cart and you're with your girlfriends, you got the, the, the champagne, like, no, 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 we're way past that, right? You're like 85, 90, 100 years old, like you, you are not on a golf course for, for, for 30 years, right? So it's the very, very end of life. And I'm not talking the last two months of life, the last like two years of life, right? Where you need somebody there, you may need somebody there 24 hours a day, you may have a lot of medications, you may um, have a, you know, be wandering down the road if, if, in your underwear if, if, if your daughter didn't put you in a place like with us. So there is that. And then there's this, this wave of baby boomers, right? There's so many people that have retired and that they are getting to that age where they need help, right? We talked about this 10,000 people every single day in the U.S. alone are turning 65, right? So it's never going to go out of style. And then what are your other options, right? Like your daughter, your family's going to take care of you. Yes, they usually do. And then at some point, like they reach the end of this and they have a breaking point. Like after a couple of years, I just, I just can't do it anymore, right? Like 
So what are your other options? At-home caregivers? A couple of years ago, before um, the inflation, right, that was $20 an hour. Now it's $30 an hour to bring in at-home caregivers, right? If you brought in someone 40 hours a week for a month, it's $4,800. Then you still have to pay for food and housing and insurance. It's like, it's literally cheaper to move into assisted living and get 24-hour care. So the other thing that I was really concerned about, because I, like I said, I'm a real estate person and I wanted to do this, but I didn't have any experience, right? No medical experience. I... I don't even think I'd really been into an assisted living before I started researching this for myself. So no experience in this, but I knew that I had my own skills, my own abilities, and I knew that a lot of it would translate. I know some of it would not, right? But uh, okay, so I'm a, I'm a business person. And so it means I've done hiring, I've done marketing, uh, I'm good with numbers. Um, I, and I'm a real estate person, right? So I've done construction, I've managed a contractor before, so I can do those things. But I knew that that I was missing a portion of the pie where I didn't have any experience on the paperwork or how to how to run assisted living, how to fill the beds, how to do those things. So great thing for me, right? Like I found Shannon. Shannon is my person, right? We partnered together in this. So I didn't have to have that medical experience. And you're going to have your own skill set, right? You're going to have things that you are good at and things that you are have no idea about. And you don't have to have the whole picture to be able to do this, right? So you can bring in, you can partner with someone to be able to do that or you can hire somebody to be able to do that. So what if you're the opposite side, right? What if you you have the experience? You are a medical person, but you don't really have a business experience or admin, or you don't have any real estate experience. The same thing is true, right? You can go and you could find a partner. You could find someone to be a real estate person for you, and you could work together on that kind of deal. Or you don't have to find a partner at all, and all you have to do is buy an existing assisted living, something that's already been built, it's already been licensed. All, if you are the operations person, then again, all you got to do is come in and uh, work with some type of investor to 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 help you buy the 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 building and the the facility, and then you're 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 rolling right there, right? Or you don't have to do either of those things. You can use a proven system, right? You can use building plans. You can use um, like our building plans, right? We have our own mansion building blueprints, right? If you found someone like me or worked with us. You could say, hey, you know, I don't have to bring on a real estate partner. I'm going to take my heart and my passion for operating, and I'm going to use a system, a proven system for the paperwork and for the process and how to get the permits and what kind of building blueprints and the architect and all that kind of stuff. You could use a system and a program for that. So I think because of these things, this was the biggest uh, breakthrough in my life it, towards, towards my finances, towards the time with my family that I'm able to have but I'm able to, to love what I do. And that's super important to who I am and to our team. And you'll hear from Shannon next week, um, telling her story and telling her passion about how this has, has taken a big load off of her. She's able to come out of the corporate world and uh, be her own business owner, be her own boss, make incredible money. But she's able to do it while she's actually contributing, while she is loving on people, while she's serving people and living what she's good at, what she's gifted at. So I would say this, you are just one mansion away. Because that one mansion, that one assisted living mansion changed my life. It changed Shannon's life. Uh, it's changed Laura's life. So this is why I would suggest to you, if you're into this, um, then, you know, consider the assisted living mansion. Now, transition here. If you want additional info on this, right? If you, you're into this, you say, hey, how can I find out more stuff about the assisted living mansion, what this niche is? Uh, go to our website, palm.university. So like I said before, you can check out, you can actually go there and there's a link for our virtual tour. You can walk through our assisted living, like literally like, like you're there and spin around and look at everything, right? So Laura designed it. It's beautiful. It's incredible. You can see like, okay, how do you, how do I actually build this? And what is, what am I looking for if I want to do this? And you get a really big or uh, better understanding when you're there. Or you can go and I have a bunch of videos breaking down the numbers, breaking down what does it look like to open a small versus a, an assisted living mansion? How do I go about these? What are my action steps? So I have a bunch of videos that deep dive and uh, dig into this if you want to learn more about this niche. Now, if somebody wants more than that, you're ready to take action and you want actual training on this, we do a six-month startup training. So you'll have all the expert education. We teach you how to start your own assisted living mansion all the way through the process. And then there's online support, Q&A. Every day you can ask me or Shannon or Laura any kind of questions and we can uh, get back to you with that. And then we do monthly live coaching calls. We deep dive each month into a specific topic 
and really get into it. And you can get uh, additional training, get your questions answered on anything there. So because you're here tonight, uh, super excited. We do a promo code. Promo code is 1000 off. So $1,000 off tonight. So the price is $997. If that's something for you, again, it's on the website, palm.university. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. We're coming back next week. We're going to continue our training. Shannon's going to be sharing her story, talking about how she has been impacted by this and what it's done for her. And we'll continue to break down bit by bit how to open your own assisted living mansion.